What's going on, dudes and dudettes? So, yeah, a lot of news past couple of days since I made a video, and of course, I wait another day, and there's more news. So, I'll stick with this video for more of the USC stuff and Charters, Lakers, Anaheim Ducks, all that other good stuff. Duke will be on the next video. So, yes, yeah, start off with this bit of USC news. So, yes, Tackett Curtis, the freshman linebacker from USC, was recently named the Pac 12 Freshman of the Week. For that game out there at Arizona State, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, overall, it's a pretty nice thing to get. I think he's one of the first freshman players at USC, especially on defense, to get it that early. So lucky for him, that's a pretty nice stat to have on his resume so far. Then when it comes to the game against regular Arizona or the University of Arizona, this will be happening around 7, 7.30 not tomorrow, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday in LA. Luckily, it's back home and I have to go travel back to Arizona. But that game will be on ESPN. So, yes, once again, we're out there in front of everybody, kind of. It is on a main channel, but 7 o'clock will already be 10 o'clock in the East Coast. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to mostly not watch past halftime. But as long as USC takes care of business, I think they should be okay. And then, yes, USC, I think Lincoln Riley and the coaching staff the other day did give their kicker, Dennis Lynch, who's been there. He's already going on his second season, but I kind of already forgot that he was not on scholarship, but they did award him a scholarship. Maybe it was because he made, I want to say, one field goal. He probably made two field goals this last game out there at Arizona State. But, yeah, he's been pretty much perfect on his extra points as well this season and so he definitely deserved this scholarship and luckily they have a nice kicker for them at least for the next few seasons coming up and then yes usc basketball has a little bit of news they did set up a game in vegas again i believe it's the second time because the Kansas state they're playing early in the season in vegas and then at a different arena in vegas in early december they will be playing against who was most likely a top five team in Gonzaga at that point. So it'll be a nice road game to be able to see where they're at in the standings and stuff. See how good they are compared to one of the other top teams out there in college basketball. But yes, once again, in December and in Vegas. So we'll see what happens with that. And then USC has been practicing kind of like Duke has started up their practicing stuff for the new season. Starting soon, but yes, Bronny James was not in attendance. I don't know if he wasn't in attendance, but he was not practicing for this first one for USC, said the head coach, Andy Einfeld. But I'm wondering if he is getting some work on the side or not, just by himself solo. But they're not, definitely not going to rush him or anything like that because of his cardiac arrest that happened a few months back. So... Let him take his time, see what he does, and see how his future ends up. But that's pretty much the update on Bronny James and him playing at USC right now. Both Duke and USC, they are only like, they're two of eight teams in all of college football this season that have scored, that have actually won all their games by 14 plus points, which is pretty crazy. Like, obviously USC would be up there because of how good they are. And the type of competition they were playing, but Duke played Clemson. They played some really good teams here and there. Even UConn was supposed to be kind of good, but obviously they get Notre Dame this weekend, which will be a tougher test. But yeah, even to have all their games won by 14 plus points is just pretty crazy, in my opinion. So that's a pretty nice stat for both of my football teams. Yes, PFF did do a most pressures grade, like the highest rated players. And obviously, Bear Alexander is still up there on their list as total like quarterback pressures at 15, I believe it's still. And there's another guy that's on that list, Newton. Jazarian Newton, I forget his first name. But yeah, he's from Illinois. And I did see him this last weekend. I was very impressed because I didn't know who he was or how good he was. But watching that game, I was like, this guy's sticking out like a sore thumb on defense and playing very well. And of course, he's right behind one of my guys, so definitely a nice stash player for my LA Chargers if they're smart and looking to upgrade on that defensive line. 
And then PFF also did do a list of the highest graded quarterbacks so far. This year at number five, it is Caleb Williams. Not that surprising. He's obviously projected higher than most of those guys ahead of him, but still nice to be top five and even top six overall. It's the Duke quarterback, Riley Leonard, also. So that's pretty cool that they're both on there as well. So that's some nice bit of news for them. And yes, when they talk about Caleb Williams, apparently there's a, a story going out there that he's pretty much the most can't miss type of prospect ever since like a guy like Trevor Lawrence at quarterback or even Andrew Luck. I don't know if that's like true that headline because there have been other players that whether it's offensive linemen or defensive players that are considered not miss type of prospects. So I don't know. I think that my, that headline might be mistaken, but either way, yeah, those guys were coming out. They were considered some of the more talented quarterbacks at that time. So obviously Caleb Williams gets that note and hopefully he will be able to carry it along into the NFL whenever he does go. But even with like a lot of his stats they showed recently, because he hasn't thrown an interception. So he's averaged like four touchdowns the first game, five touchdowns the next, four and five. So He's definitely up there with like, what, 18 total touchdowns and no interceptions. So that's pretty crazy too. But yeah, they even did a comparison to like his first three games last year when I had that. But it had already, they already played the game last week, so I didn't feel I should put it. But it did show that he's already on pace with higher numbers when it comes to yards and touchdowns, interceptions, all that stuff is QBR, whatever. Everything is higher than what it was in his Heisman winning year. So it's pretty obvious that he's gonna be one of the top guys if this season does continue the way it should for my USC Trojans. And yes, an ex-USC player, Tuli Tui Pelotu, obviously now with the Chargers, has pretty much been labeled as a steal right now in the draft for the Chargers because of how well he's playing, especially this last game up there in Minnesota. He had nine, nine or 10 total QB pressures which is pretty crazy. I think he even had like a sack and a half, definitely one solo, and one he had helped with Joey Bosa. But yeah, he's definitely getting a lot of pressure. That's like his high pressures are like the most by a rookie around this time since most of the other guys. I think he's just like right behind Nick Bosa, who's obviously a really well-paid defensive end up there in San Francisco and other guys like that, Miles Garrett as well. So yeah, he's definitely looking numbers-wise as one of the top guys in the draft, but hopefully we'll be able to continue that success over the next couple of weeks and months into the season. And then when it comes to Nasir Wyatt, who is considered the number one linebacker, I forget if he's 2024, 2025, whatever year it is from modern day, but he recently did put out a top eight list team, so this is not his final list, I don't believe, but USC, one of the local schools, didn't make it in that top eight, so that's pretty good, especially when they interviewed him recently. He was wearing an Oregon headband, which kind of sucked because it was on a USC recruiting YouTube page that they got the interview, but luckily, I guess he does still regard USC that high to still consider him consider them in his top eight so I'm not mad about that and then PFF said that USC is the only school with three wide receivers in their overall highest graded players as like over 80 grade or whatever that grade is it's not percentage it's like some type of grade I believe like Brennan Rice is around 81 Todd Washington is probably the highest up there as well and then who was the last guy? Let me get that for you. And then Zachariah Branch, of course, was the very next guy. So, yeah, obviously, a lot of talent there at USC. Those guys have had big games, while the other ones have not, but they've definitely been the more consistent guys out there at that position. So definitely very excited to have those guys on our roster, especially for years to come. And a top 2025 four-star safety, Jonte Gilbert, who... Had decommitted from Ohio State a few months back and reopened his, you know, recruiting and stuff. Did set an official visit for that University of Arizona game at USC on October 7th. So it's pretty good that they're getting some type of an official visit or something like that in the works. 
this early with him and then hopefully he will be able to take another visit next season as well at some point or maybe he just commits early and does not visit any other team but yes either way this is going to be a big time get for them in the future if this does go down in 2025 for them and then this company called the all sacks conference they picked about like six to eight players i believe in college right now to do an nil deal and linebacker from usc shane lee is a part of it but apparently they're going to be donating money every time these any of these players get a sack i believe on a quarterback so I think it's because it's some type of underwear, so I guess you can get the joke with the sack thing, but I think it's like $1,000 every time that happens, and sadly, Shane Lee did not even play in his very last game, but when he was playing the past couple of weeks, he's looked really good, so I don't know why he is not playing, but they should definitely get him out there, because it's for a good cause, especially if he does play well, so definitely looking forward to seeing him get some more sacks for this whatever company, underwear company it is. And PFF also did say that Marshawn Lloyd of USC is the highest graded Pac-12 running back according to their numbers. And it's pretty obvious because he had a really great game this last Saturday against Arizona State. So it was kind of surprising that he's considered the highest graded in the conference. And when he was doing good, then you kind of went away from him from having a bigger night and better stats. So hopefully they will get back to him and continue to be able to utilize him to his best ability because he is becoming a lot better every single week that I've seen. So hoping that the new transfer from the other USC does well for our USC in the next couple of weeks. And then speaking of Julian Lewis, the 2026 quarterback that's committed to USC, he's had a pretty crazy start to the season. He's pretty much like Caleb Williams is. He has 18 touchdowns total and zero interceptions as well to start his year, which is pretty freaking crazy because it is only his second season in high school varsity. So overall, I think Lincoln Riley has got another great one as long as they be able to keep him on the team for that class or even him <clears throat> coming in a, a year earlier, what I heard too, in the 2025 class. So hoping that does end up coming to fruition at some point. And then USC basketball did released their full schedule, you know, their full non-conference schedule, because I think Duke released their full schedule, but I'll get into that in another video. But yeah, some of the main teams, like a Kansas State, like I mentioned earlier, still very early in the season in Vegas, Seton Hall, they'll play them, and then they'll also play the next game, Oklahoma or Iowa, so that's another good matchup for them, Gonzaga in Vegas again, and then they play Auburn as well on the road because Auburn did come to USC last year. And that was a lot closer game than a lot of people thought. So hoping USC can get that victory on the road to be able to help out with their RPI or <clears throat> BMA. I don't know what the ever the heck they call it. Or I think it's like quad, a certain type of quad win. So hopefully it is a nice good quad or quality win, whatever they say. So yes, thanks for watching people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Yes, I don't know if there will be another video right after this later in the day on Friday. Or I'll save it until Saturday in case there is some other stuff that happens on Friday. But yeah, speaking of other USC news tonight. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, the receiver for Detroit, scored the first touchdown for Detroit in the game. So obviously it's pretty cool. Watched him play. It was the only reason why I really watched the game tonight. So luckily he did do very well and luckily I did not have to play him in fantasy football either so like I said thanks for watching bye don't